Hello and welcome back to the Cash and Commitment podcast with myself, Yinka. And Veronia. And we're going to get straight into this. So, Veronia, how was your week? What was your highlight? Highlight of the week was celebrating our third year anniversary, I would say. So, yeah, I can't believe it's been three years. Time has gone so quickly. Yes. And yeah, I think we had a nice time celebrating it. Do you want to talk about what we did? Yep. So we went out for dinner and a show. Um, We've had, I should say, Veronia has had this virgin experience voucher thing for a long time now. Mm. So we thought, might as well use it, get a free dinner. And we just get a free dinner, actually, which is nice. Free Mm -hmm. course dinner. Uh, The food was really good, Central London. Uh, Portions were good. Uh, Vibes were good. And after that, we went to see a show called Shifters. You might have heard of it. Um, it was in the Duke Theatre, I want to say. Yeah. And um, it was starring, I can't remember the lady's name, but the main guy from Supercell. I believe his name is Tossin. I don't want to say his surname because I don't know. But he's a Nigerian brother called Tossin. Um, yeah, it was a really good show, to be fair. I enjoyed Supercell very much so. Veronia's sister seems to think that me and Veronia represent or are very similar to um, the main character, Michael, and his fiance Dion, but we don't see it. No, definitely but. not. <laughs> but, but yeah, no, in terms of the food at the restaurant, I was actually quite surprised, especially considering it was central London. Yeah. I thought the portions were going to be tiny and that we'd have to like go and buy snacks, which if you've gone to shows, their snacks are so expensive. Mm-hmm. But we were full, I think. Like, it was quite a lot of food, so... Well, we say that, but Veronica, you were craving pretzels I, and... I was. Pick I, and mix and all of that stuff. Yeah, I just kind of <laughs> want the pick and mix, but we didn't get it in the end. Because we couldn't... We were too late to order it anyway. Yeah, so. you had to pre-order, and yeah. we couldn't do that. And then the show started, and there was no interval, so there was no point. Yeah, and that would have cost, actually, like, £14 or something, which I thought was kind of crazy for, like, some pretzels, pick and mix, and a bottle of water. Yeah mad yeah but london eh yeah anyway so what are we doing today we are gonna be you're answering me the question that you're answering it yourself what are we doing today veronia so we're gonna be looking at a dilemma which i found i saw on reddit and i thought it would be quite good to react to it especially since you haven't actually seen the dilemma mm-hmm. and we've also been thinking that you guys can also send through your dilemmas as well so we'll make sure there is a link in the description so that you can send through your dilemma of course it will be anonymous and then we can answer it from again yes husband and wife perspective but also from like a spender saver perspective and also a female versus male perspective Mm -hmm. too so i'm gonna go ahead and read out the dilemma it's a bit of a long one yeah no problem okay so late last year i was wondering how in spite of my girlfriend making more money than i do she is constantly broke (laughs) i asked her about it and she came clean that she is drowning in credit card debt like to the tune of 10k wow with interest of all her cards combined, totaling over 200 a month. On top of that, the cards are always swimming around their limit and she regularly doesn't have enough money to pay them all. So she gets a late charge or over limit charge here or there, which is a crazy amount of money to just lose to interest and charges. Yeah, I agree. To help her out so that the interest is less killer and she can use that money to pay down some of her other cards, I paid off one of her larger balance cards using a money transfer from one of my cards Ooh. of around £3,400. Jeez Louise. Which has an interest rate <laughs> a tenth of what she's paying and I asked her to pay me back in installments of 150 a month which she's missed here and there to free up money to pay off the other cards she has. Mm-hmm. That card now has £1,400 on it in just six months and she's no closer to even paying down any of her other credit cards she's literally never lived on her own and the house we live in is fully paid off 
So no mortgage or rent. Mm -hmm. She spends an obscene amount of money, which I'm trying to address at the moment and doesn't have the mindset of, can I afford to buy this? Rather, I must have this. She's never had to budget before, which I've asked to get down on paper where her outgoings are going. She's on top of her bills, but other than that, day-to-day -day expenses just go on the credit card, which I feel she doesn't even see as real money. What's the best way to dig out of this hole? Because I'm dead set against the idea of just paying 3K again. How for bankruptcy? <laughs> I'm joking. No. I'm joking. <laughs> um jesus there's a lot to unpick here isn't it there's there's a lot to unpack yeah um i, I still find it mad that he transferred three and a half from his okay. own credit mm -hmm. to go and help out hers that that in itself was wild um all right if we go back to the very beginning she owes 10k in credit and card she then. makes more money than he and does she makes well. more money than he does yeah. and her interest is about 200 pounds per month with all of that that stuff right um yeah she <laughs> it's a sticky one man it's a sticky one because some people will tell this guy to, to run <laughs> yeah if you see the some of the comments on reddit no nah, seriously because some people will tell this guy to run because at the moment you're not joined oh, they're not married are they no they're not married yeah so they're not joined financially yet but geez louise <laughs> Nah, man. Getting with someone with money issues is, is quite mad. I think he hit the nail on the head with him saying that she doesn't feel like he doesn't feel like she feels the credit is real money. Real money, yeah. Because it's topped up every month. She doesn't have to necessarily earn the credit. It's mm. just topped up every month and you can spend it willy nilly. Yeah. But the reality of it is that it is real money. You need to pay it back. And at the end of the day, if you don't, and she, did he say that she missed payments? Yeah, she has missed some payments. She's missed some payments, so yeah. that's messing up her credit score. Or she'll anyway. get like a late charge yeah. or over limit. Again, so she'll go over. So yeah. that's messing up her credit credit um, score anyway. Yeah, her credit utilization is messing up her credit score anyway because it's so high. Yeah, and that's going to be an issue in the future if she's trying to take out big, big loans like a mortgage, for example. I mean, I don't know whether because of the fact that they don't have a mortgage to pay. Yeah, whether that's why she just doesn't care mm. is she living she, at home so she's living with they're living together they're living together okay and the house is paid off so ah, i don't know okay whether they both paid off the house yeah, yeah, yeah or if maybe like the boyfriend had already paid off the house and she lived she moved in with him yeah we don't know that that's wild because in, initially I thought, okay, this is a young couple. I don't know how they've paid off the house. Yeah, bit, yeah, but yeah, that yeah. in itself su suggests that they're probably more middle, yeah. middle age rather than, yeah, probably, yeah. than uh, let's say, 20s to early 30s, for mm. example. But that's quite crazy, to be fair. And actually, even though their house is paid off, what is she going to do with things like retirement? Yeah. Like if she's got all of this debt, has she even got money for retirement? Yeah. If they're kind, if they're kind of older, mm -hmm. and we're only just basing this based on the fact that they don't have a mortgage. But that's crazy in itself, though. How could you still owe so much money when you don't have a mortgage to pay, which yeah. is usually the, your biggest outgoings in a month anyway? Mm. So where's all that extra money, money going to? And to be honest, even because he's mentioned that his, her interest is about 200 pounds a month so yeah. i guess that's the payments that she's making mm. so if she's not paying rent or mortgage and yes she's paying 200 pounds for the debt mm -hmm. where else is her money going and that's she earns wild. more than him yeah that's wild and it's a slippery slope isn't it because <laughs> yeah. like even if for example god forbid she passes away if she has any kids these guys will be coming to Looking knock on, the, on the door. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. But yeah, um, mate, it's a lot to unpick, to be fair. It is a lot to unpack. I'm saying unpick a lot. It's you the are. same thing, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a difficult one because it's like, as you said, there's no backstory to how they was actually um, using their finances in terms of paying off that mortgage was... Were they doing it together? Mm. Did they just buy it out, outright? Was the home given to them? Yeah, inherited? Exactly, exactly. No one knows. But there is a fundamental issue 
if you are in that much credit card debt to the point where you're missing, you're getting late payments, you're at the limit all the time. There's a there's a lifestyle issue. I yeah. think there is. I think, yeah, I would say there's a lifestyle issue. There's definitely a mindset issue there as well. The fact that she basically doesn't see, you know, the credit cards as real money. And I think that is probably the biggest problem. So mm-hmm. even when the person, even when the boyfriend, you know, kind of transferred some of that money, again, I think we spoke about this in previous episodes where if you don't tackle the root issue, the root problem, yeah. you're going to go back to square one over and over again. And you're going to keep being in that cycle. And that's what's happened here because he's maybe thought, okay, logically I pay off some of this money yeah. and you know, it'll be yeah. easy for you to pay off. But if you haven't found out, okay, what's the reason why she's actually continuously in debt, it doesn't seem like she has, that many expenses if you one of your biggest expenses is your mortgage or rent and she doesn't have that then clearly there's something going on i think it's quite common for guys to do that anyway yeah i'm general i'm generalizing i'm curious to to see from your perspective i'm because i feel like you would maybe have a similar practical mindset in that you would think okay let's just pay off this and make it easier on her Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's a generalization, but I think from the man's perspective, it's like, if I've done something significant to significantly reduce the amount you're paying, I've made it easier for you to actually pay the rest off. Mm. So as guys, we tend to kind of look at the symptom a bit more and try and provide um, solutions for the symptoms, but maybe because we haven't invested or taken the time to look a bit deeper as to what's the reason behind this then um we can't actually solve the problem at the root yeah so yeah and I find that so interesting because like so I have clients that have had a similar mindset probably to this girl and I would never just go to the practical bit of okay let's try and like start by figuring out how we can you know pay off the debt I would always say what got you into debt in the first place? Because if you don't figure that out, if you don't fix that and you don't change that mindset, they will end up doing it over and over and over again. Yeah. I mean, it's a habit. Yeah. She's been doing, this woman's been doing it for so long, which is why she's in so much debt. And which is why she's drowning in debt. It's a habit. Anything you do continuously becomes a habit. So we need to figure out where this habit has come from. Mm-hmm. What's the reasons behind it? And hopefully tackle it. And I think that's a common issue with, especially if the dynamic is guys trying to help out their partner, partner, mm. partner's um, financial situation. We tend to look at the symptom a bit too much and not necessarily tackle the the Deep root course. cause. Mm. And yeah, it becomes an issue because as you said, they'll keep doing it again yeah. and again and again. But I think that comes back down to communication. Are we asking questions? Not sorry, we are asking questions because we are asking why are you why are you in this mm. debt and why can't you get out of this debt? But we are asking the right questions, as in, what's the what's the reason why you keep spending all this money? Yeah, because and some of, of it could nature. even come back to childhood. Yeah, like if she's been because this person mentioned she's never lived on her own either. Yeah, so it could be that maybe all her money problems maybe her parents have just kind of resolved it and yeah. just kind of fixed it so she's just carried on doing whatever and if she can afford the minimum payments then she'll just carry on doing that mm. so which yeah. is wild as well because we go i go back to them probably being older than those that are early 30s and below because these are habits that she, as you said she probably would have um acquired from young in terms mm. of someone bailing her out of her money situations and she's taking this into her relationship now and the person now that you're joined with another person in terms of living together with them that person takes on that role of what their parents might have done and mm. they are now the ones that are um providing that kind of financial safety blanket to be like okay I can be a bit willy-nilly with my money but there's always someone 
back there to kind of be like a guarantor. Yeah. But exactly. it's it's sad. It's sad. I feel for anyone in that situation. And honestly, you got to have a <laughs> a really good think about whether you want to take things further with someone in terms of relationship for that because there's a lot of stress. Mm. It's a lot of stress and money is a big contributor towards um, marriages and long-term relationships ending for one reason or another. Um, One of the leading contributors, I believe. Yeah, with divorce, yeah. So, yeah, you got to take that real seriously. And I think from a men's perspective, I just encourage the guys to be empathetic, um, ask the right questions, ask a variety of questions, not just practical ones, but trying to get to the deeper cause of why this is happening and if it's that serious potentially look at getting some outside support some yeah. counseling yeah some and i mean i guess people would have also said probably on the thread as well like i would not have done this because you're not actually married either so there yeah. even is that question of whether he should have lent that amount of money mm-hmm and impacted his potentially impacted his own credit score yeah when they're not married so there is also that question so, absolutely yeah absolutely it's tough though because when you are when you care for someone so deeply you want to help them out right of course, yeah. so if we go back to the example we gave in the previous episode where your car i think you need to pay for something for your car yeah yeah, yeah. so i gave you the money in that instance i mean we weren't married together by then yeah we've been together for what one, two years, something like that. It'd been more than that. Was it? Definitely. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> we had quite out here, but uh, we've been together for a little, for Actually, a while. Maybe not. See? I I'm, I'm we pretty like, sure it was like one, two years. Yeah, maybe it was, yeah. One, two years, yeah, for sure. Because we just finished uni, no? Pretty yeah, much. I think it was like a year after uni. Okay, there we go, enough, one, two enough. years. You never doubt, never doubt my memory. <laughs> Photographic. Anyway, um... It's difficult because you want to help out that person. Yeah, of right? course. And I definitely agree. I think, yeah, there is, there will be some circumstances. Yeah. But I think the question is, it wasn't him actually lending her cash, for example. Yeah. That's where it might get a bit difficult because then actually you're using your own credit. credit. There's that for sure. But there's also the fact that as a wiser older adult, now any money that I lend to people or anyone, it has to be an amount that I'm comfortable with not getting back. Yeah. Because as as much as everyone has good intentions to pay people back, some people don't or can't actually pay people back because mm. of their kind of mismanagement of money or any kind of um, other reasons as well. So there's many reasons why people can't pay money back. So you got to be wary of that. Yeah, yeah. But I think... I guess with this dilemma, yeah, my advice would be definitely don't focus on the symptom of trying to get the debt paid off. Focus on the root cause on what's actually causing her to keep going into debt, to keep thinking that her credit card basically just is just there to be used and not paid back because obviously there's there's something going on with her mindset. And then once you work on that, then you can focus on the symptom of helping her to actually pay off. And she she needs to want to also pay the money off as well. Yeah. There's no point in you wanting her to do it. And then she's kind of like, mm, well, I don't really think, yeah, yeah, you know, it makes a difference. Like, I don't really care because then, yeah, she'll, she'll end up going back into that cycle. Yeah, for sure. People do what they want to do. Yeah. Um, but it's not to say that people's mindsets and perspectives can't change yeah so. oh but well, look at me yeah i didn't care before exactly. when i had my maxed out overdraft and 16k debt i didn't care yeah. but then yeah so i completely changed absolutely so yeah people's mindset can definitely change 100 percent. for so, sure yeah. also we talked about um dealing with the root cause which is cool but if we're talking practical steps what are some practical things you can actually look at yeah so obviously once the mindset has changed that's or when shifted. you or shifted that's when you'll then want to start focusing on okay let's list out the debts let's make sure we're doing all the minimum payments and i would definitely always recommend focusing on 
one debt, whether you want to do the smallest debt, whether you want to do the one based on the highest interest rate, it's totally up to you. But I would say focus on one debt and putting as much energy and obviously money into that debt as much as possible. And then once you've paid that off, you move on to the next one, because what you don't want to do is try and pay off all of these debts at the same time, because you won't really see any progress happening. And then you'll just not get motivated because it doesn't look like your debt is being paid off on time, or it doesn't look like your debt is being paid off very much. So focus on one, attack one, and then move to the next. So and just, just a quick one. Yeah. So if she pays off one of these credit cards. Yeah. What's your advice on keeping the credit card or canceling it? So for this I, situation. Yeah. So again, it will depend on her mindset. So for some clients, I've said, let's pause the credit cards for now. Let's fix the spending. Let's fix your mindset around that first before you start using credit cards again. If you get to a point where now you know how to save, you've been able to pay off your debt, you're no longer going back into that cycle, then you can potentially start thinking about using credit cards because you would have then got to the point where you've built the habit of not relying on credit, not mm. relying on debt. You're now just using your credit card as if it's just a normal debit card where you just spend your everyday spending on that. Cool. So, all right. Yeah. And save as well. Have some savings because that will also help. Cool. Sounds like a plan. All right. I think we'll call it a day on that one. It's been nice. A bit different as well. Something a bit different for us. Mm -hmm. Tackling a, a dilemma. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you are interested in sending your dilemmas or a dilemma you know of that you think would be interesting for us to talk about, then please use that link in the description that Fiona mentioned before. And we'd like to hear your suggestions as well. What would you have done differently? What advice would you have given to this particular couple? Yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, definitely let us know in the comments. And if you also need further support, maybe you resonate with this dilemma. If you're someone who is struggling with your debt, you're trying to pay off, but things just aren't happening or you're struggling with saving and you know you have specific goals that you want to hit, then that's where one-on-one -on -one coaching comes in. So I can personally coach you. If you're interested in that, you can book a call to find out more. And also if you are in a couple, we have introduced couples coaching as well. So if you would like to be coached by not only myself, but also Yinka, you've also got that option. So make sure you book a call to find out more about that. And I think we're going to leave it here. Yes, sir. So remember to follow and subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, we will see you next week for another episode. Yes, we will. Peace and love. Bye.